Hi, friends, welcome to this e nugget uh, on how to ace the job interview. My name is Adrian Thio. I'm the president of the Singapore Association for Continuing Education. And the association is here to help those 50 plus uh, to live, love, and continue uh, learning. I've been involved in uh, interview skills since when I was a uh, adjunct senior lecturer with NUS. Uh, and uh, that's where our founding PM, the late Mr. Lee, felt that it was important for all undergraduate to go through interview skills as part of the human skills that they need in their career. So let's begin with a brief poll. Uh, imagine you have an impending job interview. How do you feel? Possibility is you're confident, you're stressed, you're challenged, or you're excited. So let's do this poll and submit your answer in the Facebook poll now. Certainly, our feelings that we have, yeah, uh, it, it is a natural feeling because an interview, there is uncertainty. And when there is uncertainty, we, we can be uh, rather uh, stressed about it. Yeah? So psychologists say you can feel mad, you can feel bad, you can feel sad, or we hope you can feel glad as well. So uh, let's see from the brief polling as to uh, where generally the majority of us are. Okay. So uh, it appears that the majority feel stress. Now, stress is both positive and negative. So the goal of this session essentially is to help you deal with this, this uh, nervous, stressful situation. Yeah. You have gone through interviews before, probably very young in your career. And uh, so in this short session, we want to help you to look at what's critical for success. Uh, so as you think about job interview, think, think of this practice of asking and answering questions. We will leave you with three tips. One is in terms of your attitude, how to show your, the right attitude that you receive uh, you know, in your life. Then the competence, competence to do the job and, uh, and to convince the interviewer that you are the best choice. And then thirdly, your essence or your character, how you maintain your worth regardless of the outcome of this job interview. So congratulations, you have nailed the job interview. And we ask how you feel. So majority of us feel stressed. Yeah. So now days before the interview, what can you do to prepare yourself for success? So using a memory of your last interviews, what should you do to get ready? So how do you prepare for the interview? Well, there are a number of ways that you could do so. Certainly, research is important. You want to research the company. You want to check with friends and former colleagues and people who are in that industry. You want to make a match between you and the job. And certainly, you want to practice all your responses. You must be ready, of course, to show and tell the interviewer just how good you are. Yeah. Certainly making a good first impression is important. Yeah. You don't need to dress for success. You don't really have to put on a tie, but you do. You must dress neatly, yeah, be on time or a little earlier. Uh, keep 
cool, keep positive. And then after the interview, regardless of you know whether you're successful or not, be polite to send them a little note after that. Right? So given your own specific context of the time you've got, the energy level, uh, what do you foresee is your challenge? Well, uh, we, we can also get help from Googling. Yeah? And basically, you want to Google to try out your skills for asking and answering frequently asked questions. Yeah? And a simple Google, uh, there are, here are eight possible or frequently asked questions yeah? where they ask you to tell, about, tell them about yourself, uh, what is your greatest strength? What is your greatest weakness? Uh, what do you want to? Why do you leave the previous job? And so on, right? and salary expectation and all that. Right? So as you look at these questions, it's important for you to say which question scare you or challenge you. Yeah? Uh, and then prepare yourself for those kinds of questions. But it is also essential to remember that the follow-up questions are even more important. If there is interest in you, they will then follow up with more questions. Questions that go deeper, that ask you specifically uh, so that they know whether you fit in with the job or not, right? So how do you handle stress? Yeah, you, you've got to let them know that. How do you handle pressure of work? If it is a pressurizing job. Uh, and then, do you work well with other people? Uh, what can you do better than the other applicants? So depending on how many have uh, you know, applied for that job. And uh, you know, basically, you've got to know, why are you the best person for the job? Right? They want to know why they should hire you. Now, in the way that they follow up with the questions, they could be checking on your personality, on your interests. Uh, they could also be trying to find out what your aptitude is and uh, your ability, right? And overall, they could be using a lot of psychometric selection tools and they're asking questions from that perspective, right? So, Make sure you know how to answer follow-up questions. Certainly, it is not just you answer questions from the interviewers. You must also question the interviewers yourself. Yeah? So you need to find out what's important for you uh, in getting this job. Right? Uh, there are certain things you need to ask questions. For example, depending on your state of health, you may want to know whether you can have sick leave and how many days you can have, how many vacation days. Uh, will there be time off because you may need time off uh, for family matters? Uh, and then you want to see the work culture. What kind of work situation is that? Is it a stressful work culture? And if, if it is stressful, what are the stress points that you need to consider yeah, before you accept the job? There are skills that you may need to have for the long, you know, to ensure that your strategy is right. Yeah. Uh, it's a performance you could put on during the interview. Right? So oftentimes, they want to know what kind of a performer you are when you join them. Will you be a star performer? And normally for that, they ask you to come out with a, a tell us a situation that you've gone through what the task was and what action you take. Uh, so for example, uh, you may have had the experience of dealing with a really difficult customer, yeah? unreasonable difficult customer. Yeah? And your task is to try and do some relationship recovery with this customer. Yeah? Uh, he's upset and uh, right or wrong, he's the customer and the customer is always right. So what did what action did you take and what was the, the result, right? So if after the action you took and the customer became a loyal customer, that's a good story to, to tell your 
interviewer. Right? Now, interviewing is a, a, an art form. You've got to master uh, the, the art of interview. Right? And uh, in, in some of these, it may be important to know what are your non-negotiables. What are non-negotiables? Those things you will not compromise. Yeah? Like if you feel you don't want to work a five-day week, you just want to work three days and spend more time with your family, but well, that's a non-negotiable. So if the job requires you to work six days a week, well, you know how to decide. And also you want to identify your strength, your authentic strength. Yeah? For example, in dealing with people, you may be a good listener and you listen well and you have a lot of patience, right? So you want to tell them that you are such a, uh, your personality is such, you are patient and you listen well. Then certainly being able to find alignment between you and the job. You, you want to do some research and say, okay, this job that you're asking me, this is my strength, this is my non-negotiables, and uh, does this job align with what I, I want to do? Yeah. Is there a, a fit? And certainly you should only accept job that fits you. Right? Well, when you go into an interview, there are a variety of different interviews. Uh, it could just be a telephone call, a uh, one-on-one -on -one interview, or they may invite you for lunch or dinner. Yeah? Uh, or it could be a whole panel meeting up with you. It's a group interview where there are other candidates around. Uh, or it's a behavioral interview. They, they put you through certain situation and see how you behave. Right? Uh, then too, it could be a screening interview. They, they, they are screening uh, different people. They're going to do comparisons. And uh, so that during the screening, they're going to make shortlist, shortlist the candidates. Yeah? And then, of course, there's this selection interview. They've got the shortlisted candidate. And now they want to know which of the candidates will outshine the others that they can offer the job to, right? So they can provide you with various situations, various cases to deal with. Uh, it can be structured, so they, there's a process they want to take you through. Certainly, they can uh, introduce an element of stress because if there's some degree of stress on the job, they may want to see whether you can take the stress or not, right? And uh, an interview could be casual, but even if it is a casual session, you know, you must realize you are being assessed. Right? So, so don't uh, be fooled by the casual or the, uh, how, how easy it seems. Yeah? All right. So to understand the interview process, that the root word for interview is 16th century French word, Entrevue, which simply means we see each other. Yeah. It's, it's face to face uh, and, uh, or a formal conference. We are conferring, we are talking to each other. So in the end, uh, a good interview is one where it's a great conversation. You have a great conversation, you and the interviewer. And even though you may not get a job, but that is a, a good experience. Right? So structured, unstructured, semi-structured. The interviewer's objective is to uncover your skill, your experience, and your personality. Yeah. S-E-P. Yeah. Your skill, your experience, your personality. And to ensure that your skill, your experience, your personality fit job requirements. And so the interview process, the questioning and answering is not new to you. Yeah. Uh, if you think back and you remember the time when you caught your spouse, yeah, you go out on a date. Yeah. In some sense, it's an interview process because 
you will ask him a question or her a question. She will answer. She will ask you a question and you will answer. Right? And then those of you who have children, you know, when the children come back from school, you too, in a sense, will be interviewing your children, right? Hey, boy, how was school today? Yeah? Hey, it's an interview. And boy may say, same lah. <laughs> and say, what's so, you know, is, isn't there something new that you have learned? Oh, yeah, not a lot of new things. Uh, the teacher is so long-winded <laughs> or whatever. So it's an interview process. And, uh, and those things are uh, important to understand because in the end, you want a good conversation with each other. What we want to do in this uh, e-nugget is to introduce a memory a guide for you so just remember the acronym ACE, yeah, ACE. And if you can just simply remember that the interviewer wants to assess, firstly, A, your attitude. Yeah. So what attitude training have helped you, right? Uh, there are training, for example, if you're going to train an air stewardess, it takes years to train an air stewardess to have uh, this service excellence as a habit in them, yeah, right? They will always maintain a smile. They will always be very helpful. They will not lose their temper. So what kind of attitude have you received? Attitude and training you received. Then your competence for the job. What skills training have you uh, received? Have you gone for sales training, for example, or service quality training and so on? Then thirdly, your essence, your essence or your totality of your character. What has shaped your character? Uh, what are your inner value and worth as an individual? Right? So let's go through uh, each of these three areas to fully appreciate and understand uh, that you need to display this during the interview. So let's start with your attitude. Yeah. Now, attitude uh, is something that uh, takes a while to develop in you. Yeah. Interviewers, given a choice between your competence and your attitude, normally would choose your attitude. Because if you have the right attitude, they can still develop your competence, your skill. Yeah. Right? But if your attitude is bad, then it's, it's tough for them. Right? So between you having the attitude or the skill, they would rather choose your attitude. Right? So attitude will then change things for them. Yeah? And uh, you may be given a lot of different circumstances on the job. And there are, you know, nowadays people, uh, you know, there are so many different diverse type of people at the job. And then things may go right, things may go wrong. But regardless of those circumstances, if your attitude is positive and good, they take that, right? So critical, huh? your attitude, the A, essential, important. Then your competence, right? How competent you are. Competence for the job that you've got. Now, Mihail Sitsen, Mihail. Is a Hungarian social psychologist. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to find out what made people happy. Yeah. You look at generally anyone, what made them happy? Okay. So in his study, he said that the job will is one determinant, the kind of job that you've got. Right? So he distinguished between two types of jobs the exotelic and the autotelic. Okay. These are Greek, derived from the Greek word. The root word is from Greek. Exo is external. Auto is internal, within auto. Telic is gold. Yeah, gold. So exotelic is external to the gold. Yeah. Auto is the goal itself, yeah, within the goal itself. Okay. 
So let's take a look at the difference between these two. Yeah. Uh, exotelic is you take the job because it pays you well, it gives you good money, right? Yeah. Uh, so an illustration will help. Uh, a training consultant was in Brunei, uh, Holiday Inn, and he stepped out and saw this window cleaner cleaning the window, smiling, happy, and all that. <laughs> yeah. So the consultant asked, well, what are you doing? You know, he said, I am giving everyone a better view of the beauty of this world. You know, because if I clean the windows properly, you can see that Brunei is a beautiful place, right? So he's not looking at taking the job for its pay. He's not paid well, but he's very happy he's doing the job because it gives him a lot of satisfaction. Much like a traffic cop who directs traffic in the smoke and, and exhaust fumes and all that, but the autotelic traffic cop will be dancing, will be swinging around, will be using all kinds of body language in order to get the traffic going, right? So that's autotelic, right? So ideally, if you can get a job that where you where it's autotelic for you, you get a lot of joy from doing the work, even though it may be middle work, but you are happy, right? Then Mihal took a look at balancing between the challenge of the job and the competence. The job is challenging. Have you got the competence to deal with it? So if you look at situation one, uh, your competence is very low. You don't have a lot of competence. And uh, whereas the challenge of the job is high, yeah? Much like you're a tennis player, you just started playing tennis, and then they get you to play the number one player in the world, right? Certainly what's going to happen? You are going to be totally distressed. You don't even know where the ball is coming from, right? So that's bad. That's bad for you. You shouldn't take on the job like that. Yeah? On the other hand, if your competence is high, right? You are very competent. You've played tennis, played very well for many years. And then you have to play with a, a beginner, right? So what's going to happen? You're going to be totally bored. All the time you are, he's picking up balls. And <laughs> you are so, you just got to wait for him, right? It's no fun. What is important is situation three, yeah, where there is a balance between the challenge and your competence. So, uh, so you play with someone who is at your level and you both can challenge each other and continue to learn skills from challenging each other. So there here is where you have what is called you stress. Yeah? So you're not distressed, nor you are bored. Yeah? You, you have you stress or positive stress. I like to put it as useful stress. Yeah? So useful stress happen when you are in the flow. Yeah? You are in the flow. You are the challenge meets your competence, right? Athletes among you will know this as you are in the zone. So people are happy when they're doing a piece of work when it gives you joy, right? So you could be a, a chef, a cook, and you love cooking. You love to be creative. You love it when you see people smile and all that. It doesn't matter whether you're making a lot of money, but, you know, you are in the flow. So I wish for you that you choose a job that fits your uh, competence. Yeah. And then character, yeah. ultimately your character, uh, that's important. That's your essence, that you, your whole self. Yeah. Uh, that's what you are worth. Yeah. And character takes years to develop, right? where you added value to whatever organizations that you work with. They, uh, love to give you good testimonies because you know, of who you are, right? And uh, in present day world, you need also to be resilient, you know, to be able to look at various circumstances and you bounce back. You, know? you bounce back from those adverse situations that you are faced with. Yeah. Okay. So A, C, E, your character. 
Then two, in trying to get the job, you need to differentiate yourself, yeah? your strength. Uh, do you have those people skills that will help you? Yeah? Or, or the social skills that enable you to uh, deal with people? Yeah? Uh, then some of these are, of course, soft skills. And then there are the hard skills. Yeah? Um, but certainly in the present day, you know, fully connected world, technology uh, becomes important. Yeah. So IT skills, com computer skills, you know, all these becomes important. And overall, Singapore government is trying to make sure that we are a smart nation. And that means having those skills that make us smart, that is our job. Right? So, uh, so you need to keep learning. And uh, even though these hard skills may put where we to put in some effort, but be committed, be willing to do so. Right? Uh, I have a favorite philosopher, Dallas Willard, who you know, has this little three-word acronym that I use for myself and my family. So to Dallas, it's fundamental if you are going to have a fruit, have fruitful living, loving, and learning. Yeah. By the way, that's the hashtag for SAIS, Singapore Association for Continuing Education. You've got to keep living actively, keep loving, and then keep learning. Right? So you must have a clear vision in your mind's eye. You must see that vision clearly in your, in your head, which focuses your, your intention from within your heart, what is your goal? What, is, what do you want to achieve you know, uh, on this earth, so to say, right? And then uh, you then want to accomplish it because how much vision you have, how good your intentions are, if you have, don't have the means to accomplish, then it's not going to help you, right? So for that vision, you need to have a mental rehearsal of what that vision is. You must be clear before you even go for the interview. And the reason why you accept that interview is because that job is in your mind's eye. It's your vision. You are willing to get into that. Right? There are other two things you must know of yourself. That's important. Yeah. First one, you must know who you are, who is myself. And number two, what is your work? Yeah. Uh, Stanford psychologist who teaches creativity in business say two questions are most important if you want to remain creative. One is who is myself? And next question is what is my work? Who is myself? It's a capital S, self, the bigger self. Not who you are right now. Yeah. Uh, who I am right now, Adrian, sp spelled with a small a, is just me. But who do I want to be? Yeah. Who, uh, who is it that I'm created by the universe to be? Uh, that's myself. That's what I aim for. And then what is my work? Not the work that you do just for yourself or your family, but the work that you want to do for the world. I know it's esoteric, it's huge, it's existential. But think about that. You do need to know who you are and what work you want to do before you leave this earth. Okay. So let me give you an illustration of uh, the, the interview process. Yeah. So whilst I was an uh, adjunct senior lecturer, you know, teaching interview skills, uh, what is stated there is that you need to have this skill throughout your career, right? So, uh, uh, okay, uh, to, to go through the interview process and, uh, and going for this job, right, that is important, right? Uh, the, in the end, I didn't get a job, but I do feel that my attitude throughout the job interview in America, yeah, five of us limited down to two 
in the end, the, the British guy got it, but he got it because of politics, right? So, uh, and uh, I actually then became a consultant last 37 years, running my own consultancy because of that, because I, I don't understand the politics. But whatever it is, my attitude, I think, was right. Uh, I, I look at my competence and my being rejected, nothing to my competence. And then, in essence, my soul, so to say, was still sane, or still hope, right? So in this visualization process, you've got to process, you've got to visualize and practice. Yeah? You've got to keep practicing the type of questions and what it is. So, uh, so let's now move into the, uh, the question and answer portion. Yeah? Uh, ask your questions and then we will see uh, you know, what some of the answers are, some possible answers. Yeah? So drop your question into the Facebook comment section and, uh, and we, we will try to handle some of these questions. So go ahead and post your questions. Okay, we have got one question, and the question is, is there anything that I shouldn't ask or say during the interview? Is there anything I shouldn't ask or say during the interview? Okay. Again, this is a test of how well you know the company, how much research you've got about the culture, of the company. Yeah. Uh, certainly, uh, any, any questions that relate on a, in terms of a, where there's a racial bias or there's a political kind of undercurrent, don't ask those questions. In other words, don't bring in your political self into uh, that situation. Yeah. Uh, people don't like that. Uh, I know as we age, there are many things you know, burden that we carry, frustrations, and so on. Uh, even in terms of trying to get a job and their frustration. So don't, don't bring those in. Yeah, it's advisable not to bring those in uh, because it just shows that you not only have a bad attitude, but you do not respect them. So key is respect. If you want to develop trust between the two of you, show respect yeah, to each other. Uh, let's take another question. How do I know if I have a good chance of succeeding an interview? Okay, how do I know? This is a tough one. Yeah. Oftentimes, there are candidates went through, feel very good, thought I answer all the questions. Yeah. And then it was a negative response. Yeah. So when that happens, uh, it's, it may not be you, remember that, it may not be you. It could be they found somebody who fit better, okay? So, so what do you do? Expectation after an interview is critical, yeah? Uh, some psychologists say expectation is a construction of, uh, it's a construction of something that, you know, uh, that you would, not help you, you're, you're constructing, you're building yourself up unnecessarily. Yeah. So you want to have good, good feel about it, but don't expect too much, knowing that you may not see all the reality, right? So uh, be realistic, yeah. get in there, have a good conversation, uh, end up goodwill on both sides, and I think you should be uh, happy with that, right? Okay. Okay, let's have another one. Any good job platform to recommend if seniors are looking for jobs? Any good job platform? Yeah. Any good job platforms? Um, well, Singapore just celebrated its 55th anniversary and the government is very aware yeah, with COVID-19 uh, situations are not going to be very favorable. Yeah. 
So there are many possibilities out there for you, right? All you need to do is uh, find out, find out. There are many agencies out there who are helping. Yeah? They are offering you opportunities, regardless of the type of jobs. Yeah? Uh, and uh, so it is a question of finding out. So you're not sure, call up says, call up you know, uh, NSA, and we will, we will link you into those uh, good job platforms for you to, uh, you know, to, to try out, right? So that's uh, important. Uh, another question, how can I calm my anxiety right before an interview? Yeah. How can I calm my anxiety? We all have our own way of dealing with it. Yeah. Well, to be frank, even for me to do this session, I was stressed. Right? Uh, stressed not because of being able to un answer questions. Stressed because of the technology involved. Yeah? So how do we handle stress? It's very personal. Yeah? Uh, different people have used different ways. One way is certainly a lot of deep breathing. Yeah? beforehand, right? Uh, ensure that you, your posture are right, yeah? Okay. Uh, that get a right posture. Uh, look at what, what is the worst that it can happen, right? What could be the worst? Yeah. So the worst is you didn't get a job, you know? That's not the end of the world, right? So find out your own way to manage the stress, yeah? uh, it could be as simple as, uh, for me, uh, simple as I get a hug from my loved one, my stress goes down. <laughs> okay, so so I leave it to you, yeah, to find out which way uh, you feel will help you uh, reduce your stress and get ready for the job interview. Okay, um, it's hard to find. Next question, it's hard to find a job these days, especially during COVID-19, any tips? Yeah. So difficult to find a job during this time, uh, particularly of COVID-19. It is difficult because we do not know. There's a lot of uncertainties coming up. Yeah. Uh, and uh, even potential employers also struggle. Yeah. Because, why? Because they do not know what's going to happen uh, even in the next three months. Right? And uh, so there are a lot of uh, jobs that emerges. Yeah? emerges. It come out as a result of COVID-19. So look for those jobs. But you must be prepared then to take on jobs that you may not have done before. And that means you are ready to learn. And uh, with your level of experience and uh, wisdom, because you, know, you have picked up a lot of skills over the years, uh, give those a test, try those out. Yeah. Uh, be flexible, I think that's, that's the key word, be flexible. Go in there, find out for yourself, have a chat, talk to other people, and then, uh, you know, you can still make a choice. Yeah? So the ACE, right attitude, flexible, uh, talked about what your, your skills are, your competence, and then look at your character, will it fit? Uh, will it fit? Okay. All right, uh, next question. How should we keep our hands during the interview? <laughs> okay. How should we keep our hands during the interview? <laughs> okay. This is a tough one for me, yeah. uh, because uh, normally over the years, I give a lot of training. I, my hands move all over the place, right? So how do you keep your hands to yourself? One way uh, that some experts suggest is you do this. Yeah. Not praying, but you put your uh, fingers together yeah, and then put it down, right? Put it down. Right? So that way, uh, your hands do not move around too much. But a lot depends on who we are. You know, it's like saying, 
you there are people who are very expressive with their hands and you ask them to do this, it's almost impossible, right? Uh, basically, it's cutting, sorry, cutting out the distractions. Yeah. So being conscious when you are moving your hands around too much. Uh, maybe, you know, like what I need to do is just put it, put them down on the on my desk and and talk. Yeah. So so just breathe, relax, and your body language will follow accordingly. Okay. Question seven: How should we research on a company so that we may have reasonable understanding of okay. so research is is critical yeah uh, we are in an internet world so there are a lot of information out there uh, actually my own thought is there are more information that you need when you research any company there are much more information than you need but you do want to get information relevant to that job that you are seeking. Yeah. So uh, one is certainly the industry. Yeah. You want to know which industry it is. Yeah. Sunrise industry, sunset industry, but know the industry. Then narrow down on the companies in that industry. Okay. Yeah. There are companies doing well, for example, in a particular industry. There are companies not doing so well. So uh, companies can also become desperate in looking for good talents. Yeah. So, so research into it. Friends can help. Yeah. Friends can help. People who have been in that industry previously, they can, they can help you uh, do that. Right? Okay. All right. And uh, next, can I, pre can I pretend to know a topic? If I'm not too confident in the topic, okay. can I pretend? Yeah. Uh, well, certainly pretense is a no-no. Don't, don't pretend. If you don't know, say you don't know. Yeah. Because say you don't know uh, will not get you into trouble. Yeah. But if you say you know and you get it wrong, that's even worse. Right? So in your preparation, try and find out more. But you can always qualify yeah, uh, what you know about the subject, right? So you can always say, from what I know, from my research, you know, uh, before coming to this interview, uh, this is what I find out. And uh, certainly, uh, from what I found out, that it's something that I think I can get very interested in. Yeah, I know. There are skills involved that I may not yet have, but you know I'm willing to learn, right? So you qualify what you know and uh, not just say those things without ensuring that you are saying the right thing, right? So never ever uh, BS, la. <laughs> never ever bullshit, <laughs> yeah, because they can find out, right? Okay. Uh, can, okay, next question. Can we ask when we would hear the outcome? Yeah. Can we ask when we would hear the outcome? Certainly, that you can ask. Yeah. Uh, tell the interviewer, okay, uh, in, in view of me looking for a job, I do need to know uh, what the outcome of this and uh, when are you expected to tell candidates? Yeah, there you can ask. And they will tell you. Okay? They will tell you. Uh, and uh, sometimes it is about having a second interview, right? So that you know they will also let you know. But oftentimes they will not, not let you know there and then. Yeah? They will call later on or WhatsApp you later on. Okay. Uh, question ten: What should I do if H is an issue in a job interview? All right. So what should you do? If H is an issue. Yes, H has been an issue, yeah, depending on the organization. Uh, some organizations have not developed an awareness of uh, aging workers, aging employers. Yeah. And uh, so you, you must realize that 
it can be an issue, right? And so a lot depends on when they ask you uh, to come for the interview. Yeah. Do they know uh, your situation, <laughs> right? Uh, so, so normally when they, you know, open up, when, you know, to, to look for people, uh, hopefully you find those who are looking out for older employees. They're already looking out for them, right? So that one, you don't have to do too much. All you need to do is just tell them, you know, I, I can do it. I still got the energy level. I still got the focus. I still uh, can be very organized in the work I do, right? Uh, and, uh, well, uh, I may be a little slower, but wisdom uh, is nuanced. You know, I, I've seen many, many situations, many, many experiences, and I can handle that, right? So, uh, the, the, we, we do try to ensure that the employers are, are fair, yeah? and that they do not get out there and have prejudices against senior people, right? So, uh, so do let us know if there are issues that you face like this, and you know we are willing to advise you accordingly. Right? Okay. How to tell the interviewed interviewer that my weakness is also my strength? Any example? Okay. My weakness is also my strength. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who it was who said that your strength, when carried to the extreme, becomes a weakness. Yeah. Your strength, when carried to the extreme, becomes a weakness. For example, you are very patient and you will listen to the customer. Right? That's your strength. But then you carry to the extreme and you do not know how to stop the interaction with that long-winded customer. And the, the line, the queue has formed up. People are waiting you know, to be served. Meanwhile, you've got this customer who is long-winded, who is asking this question, that question, and so on. So, um, so then, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Well, they say we always must have certain boundaries yeah. okay. in, in dealing with people. Uh, when, when I was helping out certain organizations uh, for counter service, uh, we, we would ask the staff to say, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, I'll be with you. I'll be with you the moment I'm through with this customer. Okay. So, so hold on. I know you are there. And so your, the fact that you are referring to the next customer in line hopefully gives the cue to this long-winded customer to say, I, you know, I've got other customers that are going to serve. Yeah. Of course, the other option is then to say, can, can I get you uh, to be served by someone else, yeah, because it looks like yours would take some time, right? So could we do that? So there are a number of options in dealing with people like that. But know your strength is very important and know the boundaries of uh, how you perform that strength. Uh, yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, okay, next question. At my age, 71 years old, what are the chances of an interview for professional jobs? I did not disclose my age in my CV. I did not disclose my age in my CV. Okay, so uh, professional jobs are at another level. Yeah. Uh, it uh, calls for people uh, with certain professional skills. Yeah. Uh, the, a, a professional skill could be your ability to, to call the shop, to make decisions. Yeah. 
that are appropriate. Given a certain situation, make a decision there. Uh, it could be a managerial role, right? a managerial role. And so your thinking becomes critical. It's In the end, it's all about your thinking and your ability, actually, to ask the right question yeah, in any professional job. Okay. Uh, uh, a professional need not know all the answers, but a professional must know how to ask the right question from a position of uh, understanding the whole situation. So in the civil service, we call this the hair quality, the H-A-I-R. H for helicopter view, A for power analysis, I for imagination, and R for sense of reality. So the question is, have you got the hair for the job? Right? So you may not reveal your age, but go down there in a sense to show your, your hair. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a light way of putting it, but go in and show that you've got, you've got hair quality. Yeah. And uh, uh, if the interviewer um, is you know, somebody who is flexible and somebody who is open yeah, to recruit at the professional level, someone whom they can trust, you, you, you stand a good chance. Okay, next. Uh, hi, Adrian. Is there age limit despite it mentioned otherwise? Are you telling interviewees to be hypocrites to meet the interviewer's perception or biases? Please clarify your position as an advisor. Never ever yeah, be a hypocrite, right? Hypocrites. Yeah. You are actor, you're putting on an act. And then when they recruit you, they find out you were just an actor. So never ever uh, falsify or put on a front, a posture that is not real you, right? So when we say your essence, your essence is your true self, who you are. That when your mother look at you, when your father look at you, when your spouse look at you, when your children look at you, they see the same person. That personality is like that. What you see, is what you get, right? So, um, unless you're really desperate, but I say even if you're really desperate, don't do that. Don't be a hypocrite. Show who you really are uh, and trust that people can then make their judgment of whether you fit or you don't fit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question 14. I... Uh, you talk about us a lot in this session, desperately needing a job to survive and feed the family. Sometimes you can't really apply all that you taught us and we have to uh, forego some of the ideals. We just have to adapt our expectation uh, and not be too picky. Do you agree? All right. Here we are looking at you are desperate. You need a job. Uh, in moments, in situation of desperation, is uh, your choice to say what's out there. Yeah. Uh, not all uh, jobs will suit you, however desperate you are. My advice is don't go and get a job out of desperation and two months later, you lose the job. You don't have a job. Yeah. To me, that's, that's bad. Yeah. So, to tie you over this desperation, there are, you know, there are agencies that can help you yeah, because of COVID-19. And uh, so, so don't let desperation be your decision point. Yeah. Don't let do that because it is not long term. Yeah. So, so get in there, be truthful. Um, you can even say, I'm quite desperate now, sir, to get a job. Yeah, I, I've got families to feed, yeah. And uh, so I was wondering whether you have a vacancy somewhere. I'm not too choosy, but somewhere that can help tie me over this difficult period. So when you are truthful, you are honest, 
you are yourself, I think interviewers see that yeah, and they can uh, understand uh, what situation you are in. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, so uh, don't be too desperate. Yeah. Actually, just on that, watch Three Idiots. Yeah, I don't know whether you've seen this movie. Three Idiots. Raja Rastogi, uh, one of them who even tried to commit suicide, desperate for a job. But in the end, he was being truthful. Yeah. And the interviewer liked that and gave him a job. <laughs> yeah. I know it's movie, but in real life, there are people who can understand that. Okay, then uh, does, does one negotiate salary during the first interview or wait until shortlisted? Yeah, so um, this question of money, yeah, and, and money will always come up. Yeah, um, and when do you ask that? Well, um, normally, yeah, uh, I teach uh, people to be patient here, don't, don't just focus on the money part. Yeah. Just focus on the ace, yeah, your attitude, your competence to deal with the job and your, your essence, who you are. Because who you are eventually will tell them what you are worth. Yeah. Uh, the only time I guess you want to bring up the money part is uh, you may have submitted your last drawn salary and so on, and uh, you know that can cause them some rethink of you know whether they can offer you the job. So if that is so, you may then want to say, yeah, you know, my last drawn salary was this, but I'm willing to be flexible. Right? Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, the question was whether you went you shortlisted, then do. Okay, that's fine too. Yeah, so it depends on where the, the things will come. Okay, let's have a last question. Um, and the question is, how do I secure a job interview? Okay, so this is, how do you get a interview to get an appointment, right? And uh, it's, it's a very relevant question because there are a lot of people send out resumes all over the place and do not get a interview. Yeah, I, I know one engineering graduate from NUS. Uh, he's been applying for a job for the last six months and did not even get a job interview, right? So it can be very, very frustrating. Uh, so oftentimes here, if you have sent out your resume and still get nothing, uh, sometimes you may have to call. Yeah. Sometimes you may have to connect with certain companies. Yeah, and uh, uh, look for people who have, uh, who understand situation, who knows job openings. Yeah, so look for those. Yeah, and uh, um, you, you, the more you make connections, the more the opportunities to get called for an interview. Yeah, so you don't even try. You just sit and wait because you've sent out your uh, resumes. That's not going to happen. So I wish that you would, uh, you, you've got to know that you could put in the work to get the returns. Right? Okay. Uh, thank you for your questions and answers. Um, Uh, if you found this talk useful, you know, uh, do like and share the video with your family, your friends, to help them pick up useful tips at your own pace and convenience. Yeah. You want to learn more about job interview skills for third ages, you can either contact SACE or NSA. The numbers are there given. And uh, please call uh, those numbers or visit the website to explore learning opportunities for uh, age 50 and above. Hope you like and follow this page so that we can notify you of new content in the future.